Our second talk um, this after in this session is entitled uh, Envelope Amplifier IC for Handset Applications. So the first paper had a micro base station focus, and the second paper is now focused on lower power uh, power amplifiers, envelope tracking power amplifiers for handset applications. And the speaker today is Mr. Muhammad Hassan, who is a PhD student uh, here at UCSD. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming here. Uh, I will talk about uh, Envelope Amplifier IC for handset application. And uh, here's the outline of my presentation. Uh, first, a brief introduction. And um, then we will uh, go into the detail of Envelope Amplifier architecture and uh, what are the challenges involved in the design of Envelope Amplifier for wideband applications. And then I will show you some really good uh, measure measurement result, and uh, then I will conclude my presentation. So uh, concept-wise, uh, envelope tracking is uh, quite simple. Like uh, we provide uh, dynamically varying supply to RF uh, PAs, uh, RF device, uh, so that there is uh, little uh, power dissipation, as shown here by the uh, gate area. Uh, but it doesn't solve the problem completely. Uh, it's kind of uh, transformed the problem of uh, enhancing the efficiency of RF device to enhancing the efficiency of envelope amplifier. And this statement is getting more and more true as we are going for wider band application because designing envelope amplifiers for uh, like 20 megahertz LTE is, uh, is not easy to ask. Uh, from efficiency perspective also, uh, we, we uh, uh, getting something like uh, 75, 80 is not uh, easy to ask. So it, it doesn't uh, fully solve the problem for wideband. So, um, so to uh, solve uh, these issues, we um, propose some uh, improved uh, amplifier architecture, which I will show you next couple of slides. It's the um, simple description of uh, envelope, uh, envelope tracking, but envelope tracking has a lot more potential than this as shown in this next slide. So it, it, it is very suitable for multi-band, uh, uh, multi-mode application, actually. So uh, the simple brute force approach of uh, designing uh, some power amplifiers for multi-band application uh, in our tracking might be we have a separate uh, envelope amplifier and separate RFPAs for each band. Uh, but uh, then in the uh, the next step, we can have uh, uh, one envelope amplifier which is high efficiency, and we can use a different band, uh, different PAs. But uh, the ideal thing would be to have a complete uh, uh, integrated solution in which we have envelope amplifier, which can work for all different modes of operation, like LTE, WCDMA, and if we have some power amplifier. Uh, which is either broadband or multiband, then we can achieve very good efficiency. So this this thing make envelope tracking really attractive, because if we look uh, on other approaches of efficiency enhancement like Doherty architecture, uh, it's not easy to um, have a higher efficiency for different uh, uh, PAPR signal, which is true in the case of uh, uh, different. Uh, standards like LTE or WiMAX, because Doherty just uh, optimize efficiency at a fixed back off. So from this perspective, internet tracking is really uh, uh, attractive. And uh, this is the uh, way in which we are moving in future, like uh, smartphones and this stuff. So uh, the architecture of neural amplifier is um, uh, suggested based on the uh, signal. So here I, I show a typical spectrum of uh, WCDMA envelope uh, signal. So uh, it's true that uh, there is like 85% of the power uh, lies uh, within few kilohertz of bandwidth. So it suggests that if we have some switching amplifier which are very good for, which are very good from efficiency perspective, not from bandwidth perspective, uh, if we have some uh, switching amplifier and uh, we can use that to amplify that low frequency portion and then we uh, place a, a wide band but uh, less efficient linear stage in parallel to provide, uh, first of all, to provide uh, this uh, 
uh, more and more signal which is at uh, far off frequencies uh, and as well as to provide some filtering which uh, this uh, switching amplifier generates. So on this right side, I show some uh, typical plot of our nerve tracking system. If we have this input voltage ramp signal and then uh, with some gain we get output, you, you can see that linear amplifier just provides uh, AC power and while the switching amplifier provides some average uh, power. And uh, there is, uh, they are kind of uh, 180 degree phase uh, opposite. To, so it means uh, linear stage also provides uh, um, active filtering uh, to filter out the switching noise. And if we look at the uh, challenges uh, in the design of this envelope amplifier, so designing some envelope amplifier for wideband application like 20 megahertz is uh, really tough because we know that envelope, uh, calculating envelope is just a nonlinear transformation. So even when we say 20 megahertz LTE, uh, it means uh, it doesn't mean that envelope is 20 megahertz. So envelope is maybe from 60 to 100 megahertz. So linear stage should be capable of uh, handling that much uh, wide bandwidth. And it has uh, more, even more stringent requirement, like we need really high slew rate, as well as we need uh, a very high loop gain so that we can filter out the switching noise. So as, as you can see here, like, because uh, we have switching amplifier, it generates all the harmonics um, at, at switching frequency. So one, uh, but we have just uh, 20 dB roll of filter at the output of the switching amplifier, which is not sufficient. And uh, actually it's becoming more and more problematic if we look from receive band noise perspective. So uh, th these all requirements make this uh, design of this uh, linear amplifier uh, in, in the null amplifier really demanding. And we, we uh, previously people have been using folded cascode uh, linear stage uh, to provide, uh, uh, to, 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 to be used as a linear amplifier in the null amplifier. But we, we suggested to use this uh, source cross coupled uh, linear amplifier. The reason for that is like, uh, because this is for handset application and we really want to minimize uh, power in, in, at DC when there is no signal. So uh, at the same time, like uh, we are talking about one watt power level. So these devices, M17, M18, output devices are really uh, big. So it means there is a huge capacitance at this node. So if we use some uh, folded cascode at the input, uh, first stage, then to meet the slew rate requirement, we will need a uh, very large current, which will uh, turn out to be, uh, uh, in, in the case of handset, it, it's not good because we are not operating handset all the time. And if an amplifier is all the time uh, consuming uh, DC power, then it's not good. So we, we propose this uh, uh, amplifier and it meets uh, for the same requirement, same uh, slew rate and gain bandwidth product, we can uh, uh, almost half the DC power. And then, uh, sorry, um, my, uh, then we should go on to the measurement results. So to test the performance of the envelope amplifier, uh, I first apply just uh, uh, test it with some resistive load, which is a kind of uh, pretty good assumption uh, for power amplifier placement. So, uh, so here is, uh, to, to see the slew rate, I applied 200 kilohertz square wave, and uh, the envelope amplifier has gain of five, as you can see here, and it's read, uh, it's, it is tracking uh, square wave pretty well, and has measured slew rate of 840 volt per microsecond. And then to see the efficiency, we go, uh, we test it with 20 megahertz LTE signal, and uh, measured efficiency is uh, 67%. And uh, so then we, we know that uh, there is more and more uh, bandwidth requirement coming up. So, uh, but we know LTE just can go up to 20 megahertz. And then if you want to uh, get more wideband, then uh, carrier aggregation is used, which is uh, kind of in LTE advanced. So you can see this for 1.9 gigahertz carrier. So we, we test this, our MELP and FAIR with the same resistive load and uh, the measured efficiency is 62% uh, per, uh, with 40 megahertz LTE. So, uh, so all these show that uh, we 
test rate WCDMA, we tested uh, 20 megahertz LTE, 40 megahertz LTE. So Nalpanfer has pretty good deficiency. So it suggests uh, a high, uh, good potential of this for, for multi-mode application. And these results are just for resistive load that we uh, test our null and fire with uh, uh, real PA. So we, we use uh, some commercial RFPA, and this is the IC, null amplifier IC. And uh, first we test it with WCDMA, and the measured PA is 53.5%. Uh, uh, and for 20 megahertz LTE, we get 45% uh, uh, power uh, PAE. And it's after uh, doing memoryless uh, DPD and after also doing a timing alignment between envelope and RF path. And um, this slide shows the major uh, spectrum pre-distorted input and as well as the uh, AM to AM and AM to PM. And you can see it's pretty symmetric, which means uh, very little uh, memory effects. And it's also uh, pretty linear. And this, this slide summarizes the performance of the envelope amplifier. We, we fabricated in uh, 150 nanometer CMOS process, and this is linear stage and switcher amplifier, and the die is 1.6 millimeter scalar, and uh, the for 20 megahertz LTE with output power of 30 dBm, uh, my year PA is 45%, while meeting pretty well the linearity requirements. And th these measurements were done at uh, for band seven uh, LTE, uh, which is uh, quite uh, tough uh, in terms of getting good PA. So, yeah, that's my presentation. So, if you have any questions, you can ask. Any questions? Does the performance change as you change the temperature? Uh, I, I don't know, like, how, how you, what do you mean, like, uh, So if you heat it up, would it change with the performance, or cool it down, would the performance change? I, I don't think it will make uh, uh, much difference, but experimentally, we, we didn't test it, to be honest. No. We just tested it at room temperature. Yeah. Something we'll do in the future, though. It's a good, good thing yes, to do. Yes, yes. Uh, but sometimes even we don't turn on uh, fan, still it blows. <laughs> 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 because efficiency is good, so there is not much power loss. So if you are talking about 70% efficiency, and uh, like uh, you have a one watt power level, so you are just talking about 300 milliwatt. So it doesn't make much okay. distinction. Could you talk a little bit about how the efficiency improves compared to, let's say you didn't have an envelope amplifier? kind of efficiency would you get with yes, that? Yes, uh, like uh, with fixed VDD, it's 35%, and there's 10% improvement with EP. And uh, it's for 20 megahertz LT, it's 6 dB PAPR. Any other questions? Yes. What kind of device did you use for it? Uh, we use commercial RFPA, Gallium Arsenide, HPD. Yes. I'm sorry, what was the question? My question is, uh, if you can't use the LTE, or if it's all the PA system, right? But I saw in that case the PAPR in that system. Yes. Uh, yes, so uh, you mean it's low? Uh, yeah, it's all PA system you do like the, the, the amplifier. Yes, it's after de uh, detroughing. We, we do detroughing also. So we condition the signal to, to lower the peak to average power ratio. Yeah. Yeah, to also meet the linearity. And still meet the linearity. Okay, well, let's thank our speaker one more time. Great job.